Welcome back to Photosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so everything that we've been talking about up to this point in photosynthesis, particularly in the light independent reactions with the action of Rubisco, for carbon fixation, we're talking about what are referred to as C3 plants. And this reaction shown right here, where we take basically RUBP, which is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, we form the ene diol intermediate, and once we form that, we can either carboxylate this intermediate, and ultimately that's going to form two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. That's the desired reaction of Rubisco, and since we're carboxylating it, that gives part of the name Rubisco, the last C, is carboxylase. However, once we initially form this ene diol intermediate in the mechanism, we can actually oxygenate this intermediate and through a series of steps we're actually going to get one molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate and another molecule called 2-phosphoglycolate. We're going to talk about how this molecule 2-phosphoglycolate is bad. It's not bad in the sense that it's a poison, it's actually useless and so the plant is going to have to ultimately do um, a variety of metabolic transformations to it to get it back into something that's useful and it turns out those metabolic transformations are energetically costly and in fact this oxygenase activity gives the O in Rubisco oxygenase because remember Rubisco stands for ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase and these are two activities now the carboxylase activity is preferred but if there is oxygen it will react with oxygen there are three main types of plants and we're going to cover this in, in the next video but there's C3 plants, C4 plants, and CAM plants when we say C3, we, what we actually mean is that we're going to be doing most of our metabolism on three carbon molecules. Okay? When we have C4, that means we're going to be doing metabolism on some four carbon molecules. And then CAM is not something that's usually understood. It stands for crassylation acid metabolism. But suffice it to say, the C4 plant and the CAM plant have ways of getting around oxygenase activity of Rubisco. C3 plants, which is what we've been talking about, have no way of getting around um, the oxygenase activity of Rubisco. And so as a result, they will get one molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate when Rubisco reacts with oxygen, but they also get this useless product, 2-phosphoglycolate. So C3 plants in particular are less efficient than the other two types of plants, C4 and CAM, in terms of reacting Rubisco with carbon dioxide. They have unfavorable side reactions with oxygen, and so that leads to a buildup of that molecule 2-phosphoglycolate. So one of the keys here is that in order for C3 plants to get around the oxygenation of RUBP, and the production of 2-phosphoglycolate, they have to have a pathway for getting rid of the 2-phosphoglycolate. Okay? And that pathway is called photorespiration. Okay? Now, you can ultimately see the pathway down here. Okay? I'm going to kind of just generally go over it, and it's not really so much important about this. Ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, RUBP, is going to react as we know it through BISCO. Now, when it reacts with oxygen, which actually is very probabilistic, you're going to get one molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate, which is useful. Okay? That actually can be used to make glucose. It can be used to... Um, ultimately uh, regenerate RUBP, but the 2-phosphoglycolate is going to have to go through a series of a bunch of reactions. 2-phosphoglycolate is going to react with 2-phosphoglycolate phosphatase to give glycolate, and glycolate is going to react with glycolate oxidase to give glyoxylate. Glyoxylate will then react with glutamate glyoxylate transaminase to give glycine, and then glycine will react with glycine decarboxylase complex, okay, to give serine, and then serine will react with serine glyoxylate transaminase to give pyruvate, and then pyruvate reacts with pyruvate reductase to give glycerate, and then glycerate reacts with glycerate kinase to give 3-phosphoglycerate. That's a really complicated pathway, a fairly long pathway, just to get rid of a 2-phosphoglycolate that is produced as a result of oxygenation of RUBP. However, it's absolutely necessary, okay? Otherwise, there'd be no way to get rid of the 2-phosphoglycolate, and if it built up, it probably could be a poison, okay? 
But it turns out that for whatever reason it is, the plant, the C3 plant, really wants to get rid of that 2-phosphoglycolate, but instead of just getting rid of it as some kind of waste product, it's going to transform it into something useful because notice the end product of this photorespiration pathway is 3-phosphoglycerate. So, okay, it's like you would say, oh, okay, we got 3-phosphoglycerate back, but at what cost? Okay, I'm going to read this right here even though I don't read, like reading off of PowerPoints. To deal with one molecule of 2-phosphoglycolate, the cell must waste two NADHs and two ATPs. In C3 plants, this is a sort of a general rule. For every three or four reactions with CO2, you get one reaction with oxygen. In other words, you're going to get per reaction of Rubisco, 20 to 25 percent of the reactions are with oxygen. Now when you consider how much Rubisco there is in a plant, which is a lot, it's the most bioavailable protein um, on earth, when there's, you consider how much Rubisco there is and the concentrations of CO2 and O2, when you have 20 to 25 percent of the reactions with oxygen, you're going to get a lot of 2-phosphoglycolate. So 2-NADH and 2-ATP might not seem like a lot, but when you consider the amount of 2-phosphoglycolate that you're actually producing, this is incredibly wasteful. And so ultimately, because you have to waste these high energy molecules, NADH and ATP, it's energetically costly to the plant. However, in C3 plants, it is unavoidable, okay? So I just wanted to go over that. For C3 plants, they don't have any way of separating carbon fixation from where the carbon is actually taken in, okay? They don't have a way of separating that. So this photorespiration process really is gonna have to occur because we're going to get 2-phosphoglycolate. We can't avoid that in C3 plants. However, in the next video, we're going to go over two other types of plants. That's, that's C4, which is 4-carbon metabolism plants, and CAM plants, crassulation acid metabolism plants. Okay, And I'm just going to go over these little points right here and hopefully give you an introduction to the next video where we're going to do C4 metabolism. So for C3, we have no carbon dioxide separation, meaning we're not going to separate at all in any way the place in the cell where it intakes carbon dioxide and where it fix carbon, fixes carbon dioxide. Because generally the place where it intakes carbon dioxide also is the place where it intakes oxygen. In other words, there's no kind of separation between carbon fixation and where the oxygen is. Okay? In C4 plants, that's going to give us spatial separation, meaning the place where we intake O2 and CO2 is not the same cellular location as where we fix the carbon, meaning we're actually going to selectively move the carbon dioxide into a different location and fix it there. Okay, that's pretty efficient, and it turns out the most efficient means um, and efficient conditions for fixing carbon are going to be in CAM plants, crassulation acid metabolism, which is actually temporal separation, meaning we're actually going to do some things during the day when there's light out and some things when it's night, when it's dark out, when there's no sunlight. Okay? It turns out that's going to be the most efficient uh, means of metabolism for, the, for plants in general. So C4 plants, you separate based on the space of the cell, the place, the location. CAM plants is time time separation or temporal separation. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to go over these types of metabolism. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped. Make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.